Robert. Thank Hi. you for Hi. coming here and inspiring us. I've been wondering a lot about how come we manifest at all? What's the trigger for manifestation? Is that experience? Just, or? just the, 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 uh, the overflowing or outpouring of awareness. It is its nature to manifest itself. So seven billion manifestations? Or no, one no manifestation? It, it's one manifestation seen from seven billion, or if we include all the animals, seven trillion perspectives. But the, sa the same reality, made of pure consciousness, viewed from seven trillion points of view. So how about me? You, are, you are one of those seven trillion points of view. By coincidence. No, not, not by coincidence. But you are just one of the... Uh, t t take um, infinite consciousness, this... this uh, um, when I say infinite consciousness like this, I, I don't mean to imply that consciousness is a vast space. Infinite consciousness has no dimensions at all. Understand. But we cannot think about that. So let's imagine that it is a, a vast field or space uh, in which all possible things are contained in potential. And th this, imagine this field um, vibrating within itself. But it cannot perceive itself directly. In order to perceive its own activity, it needs to localize itself in the form of a, a separate subject of experience, a finite mind. That's each of us. And it is only from the perspective of a finite mind, an apparently separate subject of experience, that consciousness appears as form in just the same way that when your own mind, the activity of your own mind, assumes the form of a dream at night, your own mind doesn't view the dreamed world directly. You have to enter, you have to overlook the fact that you are dreaming. You have to enter into your own imagination. You have to seem to become a separate subject of experience in the dreamed world from whose perspective the dreamed world is known. So each of us are like dreamed characters in the mind of infinite consciousness, through whom or through whose agency or from whose perspective infinite consciousness appears as an outside world. In other words, it is each of our minds that refracts the unity of consciousness and makes it appear as a multiplicity and diversity of objects and selves. So now as a finite person, me, the I, I decide in my finite mind to have a child. So what is happening now? The number seven billion and one in the finite mind, but in consciousness, consciousness it was there already that opportunity to that, for that to happen. Is that, does that make sense? Yes, yes. Well, it's, it's just like your, in the same way that your mind at night in a dream can um, refract itself into a multiplicity and diversity of people and things. It's the same w with, with consciousness. Consciousness does the same in this, in this waking state. So w when, when you have a child, the, the consciousness of your child or the self of your child is not, is, it doesn't appear new. Just like the people in your dream uh, uh, th their consciousness is not new. It is borrowed from the consciousness of the dreamer. So the, the consciousness of the new child, which is the being, 
the self of the it is not a new being it is a new localization of the same ever present being so the being doesn't come into existence the consciousness of the child doesn't come into existence it is eternal it eternally is but the new the, the new child is a new localization of consciousness within its own dream just as if you were to uh, fall asleep in copenhagen and uh, you dream that you go as a student to study in paris in paris you you meet a girl uh, you, you get married and you have a family in your dream you have two children and your children grow up in paris now the the two children from the perspective of you in your dream on the streets of paris your two children seem to have their own consciousness their own being they seem to be individuals that are separate from you what they essentially are and what you essentially are seem to be separate however when you wake up in the morning you realize that you the student in paris the woman you got together with and your two children the consciousness of each of you was a refraction of the same indivisible consciousness of your own dreaming mind so it's it's the same here and when you feel that you love your children that feeling of love is the recognition that your being is shared that that's what love or friendship is it is the recognition that despite our differences our different bodies our different thoughts our different feelings etc underneath all of that our being is shared when we feel that that is the experience of love and that is why everybody without exception loves the experience of love what it really means is that everybody without exception loves their own being and everybody in fact longs to be divested of everything that seems to make their being feel temporary and finite that's why everybody loves friendship or intimate relationship because in friendship or in intimate relationship we are to a greater or lesser extent divested of the sense of separation and we feel one with the other we don't become one with the other we feel our prior unity that's what love is the recognition of our shared being thank you beautiful thank you